Well, it's summer and it's getting pretty hot out. Thankfully, I actually fixed the AC on this last summer, but I wasn't super confident that it was actually fixed for good. But it made it all through the end of last summer, winter, and so far it's been doing good this year, so I feel pretty confident that it's sorted. And I just wanted to basically go over what it took to convert this R12 system to 134A because I did it wrong the first time and it really didn't work great. So the big thing to know is R12 and R134A are two different types of refrigerants and they act a little bit differently from each other. We're, so basically R12 is, you could argue, is more efficient than R134A and the oils between the two are incompatible. So this type of compressor here is lubricated by the oil that runs through the system. There are AC compressors like old uh, I think it's old Chrysler piston style AC compressors. You know, they look like a little V-twin. I think those ones actually have a crankcase in them, and that's where the oil is, just like on an engine. But all of these, all of these compressors like this one, where the oil has to be mixed with the refrigerant, it's super critical to have the right oil for the refrigerant being used because the big problem with these cheap little DEF kits that you can get from the parts stores, you know, where you can just slap on the conversion fittings and throw 134 into it, is apparently the deal is that R12 oil will not atomize into R134A. So yeah, the refrigerant will be flowing, but the R12 oil won't be flowing with the 134 refrigerant. So you end up with no oil through the AC compressor. So that's why you have to make sure to put the right oil in there as well as throw on the correct adapter fittings. So that's what I did the first time. Now you can see this system took eight ounces. I uh, honestly forget how I figured that up. But anyways, I also replaced the accumulator just because they're cheap. This has a desiccant bag in it and it's what captures moist any moisture in the refrigerant system. So if you have a really old one or if it's been exposed to atmosphere for very long, then you might as well just throw a new one on. So I threw a new one of those on. That got a lot of the old R12 oil out. And then I changed all of the O-rings in the system. And you have to be careful, like, not so much on this one, but like this line right here. Put a wrench on both sides of it and squeeze the wrenches together. That way you're putting an equal amount of force on either side of it. Because if you just put a wrench on one of them and try to go spinning it around, you're probably gonna break a line and then you're in a whole world of hurt. You're, you know, like if you break, break the line off the condenser or the evaporator here, then you really got a problem. So just put a wrench on either side of it. These I actually just used channel locks because I didn't have an adjustable wrench big enough that I felt like digging out. From there, I got everything apart, pulled all the O-rings off, put new O-rings on everything, and I put a little bit of the compressor oil on all the O-rings because the book I had recommended doing that. So you have O-ring here, here. Uh, I went ahead and did it on both all these two fittings and the low pressure switch. You got that there. Had to take the battery and the battery tray out to get to those two there. And then right here, just one bolt pull this off. There's a uh, two little gasket seal things in there. Same deal with those. Replaced them. Torqued this back on. Didn't get crazy with the torque. None of this stuff I don't think requires you to really bear down on it. Um, what else? Oh, so I knew this system was empty, but wear safety glasses. Make sure the system is discharged before you go cracking lines open. And after doing that, I charged it and it worked pretty pretty marginal oh i also put some dye into the system because i knew the system had a leak because well, it didn't work before obviously and so i got it charged up it worked really really marginal uh, sitting at an idle it would maybe drop 20 degrees from whatever the outside temp was so if it was 90 outside then you'd get 70 degrees coming out of the vents when you're sitting at an idle Moving, it would drop down to 50s, which was pretty good. But it really was not usable at an idle. Thankfully, it, uh, in short order, leaked all the refrigerant out of it. And it was leaking so bad I could actually hear it at one point. So 
this AC compressor here had blown out this back o-ring that seals this high pressure housing to the pump or compressor I mean so I had to go through and take that apart and put new o-rings in it so I found the leak on this thing actually it was bad enough that I when I was out here looking at the car it was dead quiet out and I could actually hear a little bit of hissing and whenever I had my UV light out I was shining it just around and I got to this area and I all around the housing so all around there all the way around the compressor was fluorescent green all right AC compressor is out uh, best I remember this is the longer bolt these other two are shorter bolts got the nut off and then I just had to kind of work the bolt around while pushing on it before it finally came loose and if you notice the bolt has a flat on it you have to have that facing the clutch on the ac compressor for the bolts to slip past and then i had to get a pry bar and pry it one way to get one bolt out pry it the other way to get the other bolt out so it's a real tight fit but it did come apart all right i think i got this ready to go back together i put these little towels in there just to try and keep debris out of there and while i had this apart i just kind of wiped out like so this is the high pressure side of the compressor so i just went ahead and wiped it out of any debris that was in there i didn't see anything catastrophic it's just got this gray residue from a significant amount of use i already got the o-rings replaced the i peeled out the old black ones just used a little screwdriver oiled up the new o-rings and put them in this was the so i think this is an r4 compressor if i understand it right and that was the part number for the o-ring kit i'm not doing the entire these are the two easiest to do as far as i can tell so they're the only ones i'm doing i don't feel like pulling the clutch and i don't want to have to do all that especially if it's not leaking i took this this was actually pretty difficult to get off i was hammering around on the top of it using just using a punch and trying to work you know in a star pattern working around it whatever couldn't make any progress whatsoever oh there's also this tab that you have to bend out because this thing slides on and hits this ear and this ear and that's what keeps it from going further back and then you bend this down and it grabs right there to keep it from going back forward couldn't get this to come off and i took a blowtorch and just gently worked some heat around the top ring around the bottom ring and then tapped on it some and it move a little bit and then reheat it just to, just gently i mean i wasn't really trying to get this thing hot or i wasn't trying to get it like glowing red hot like i was trying to break a bolt loose or something like that i was just trying to get it warm enough to get it to expand just a little bit so putting a little bit of heat to it that worked really good then it actually started making progress and then the whole thing slammed down so from there i used the dremel and i went around this ceiling surface got any residue rust whatever off of there got it all wiped out whenever i took the o-rings out i did the same thing to the little groove that the o-ring sits in so this is ready to go back together now i just pop this cover back on it i covered the o-rings in oil before i put them on so that should be ready to go all right so there's the tab it is bent down and i just used a hammer and just knocked it back into place I just kind of worked all the way around the outside of it really this lower o-ring was the one that was a pain to get it past but once it started it just kind of slowly worked across it until I was to the point that I needed to bend that also be advised the paper towel that's in there if you go spin the compressor around it's going to try and suck that paper towel into the compressor also the main problem that was causing this thing to really suck at idle where there was less airflow through the condenser was the condenser itself is since i have it apart i'm going to do the condenser book said you have to pull the radiator to do it uh at least getting it out that was not the case i had to take the battery the battery tray out so i could get to these lines and get this little plastic cover doodad off pulled the top radiator shroud i just unbolted the lower one flopped the whole radiator forward and that was enough room to get it out so differences in condensers and why i'm replacing it so this is called a tube and fin heat exchanger, condenser, whatever. 
Simple name because it's tubes with a bunch of fins on it. So worked with R12 just fine. Does not, it's not efficient enough to work with 134A. There's another type of tube and fin cooler. I don't remember the name of it, but it basically has a manifold on either end of it, but it still has a bunch of little tubes that circular tubes that run across. So that, that design is better than this. This is pretty, as far as I can tell, this is about as worst worst design you can get for 134A. Um, that other design is better, but it's still pretty mediocre. And just to round out the topic while we're here, this is a third style of R12 condenser. It's called a serpentine style, and it's real similar. It looks similar to what you need for R134A, but it's not because, keyword serpentine, you have one tube here and it just sweeps back and forth so you don't really want that the r134a specific condensers have a manifold at either end and then they have all of those little tubes so this style is also no good and the tube walls on these are a lot thicker than what the new condensers are the new aluminum condensers are made really really thin which helps a lot so I found this one. I don't remember the part number right now. Hopefully future me will remember to put the number down. But this is supposed to be rated for 134A. And you can see the big difference is instead of having a bunch of tubes, the, well, instead of having circular tubes, the tubes on this one are really, really narrow. And they're, and they're pretty much the whole depth of the cooler. Instead of having two rows of them, each tube runs the full length of the condenser and they're really, really thin. So I believe what that is doing is like, if you're looking at this, the Freon in this tube, the Freon in the very center of the tube doesn't get much cooling because it has a bunch of Freon around it before it can get to the actual edge of the metal, which is where, you know, the heat transfer is happening. This one, because these tubes are so thin, there's way more Freon in contact with this cooler metal, which makes it easier to reject heat. So I think that was part of the problem, why the AC in this thing was only decent running down the highway, because pretty much as soon as I stopped, the AC temp, was on, it only dropped like maybe 20 degrees from ambient. So hopefully this will fix that problem, so I'm going to try and get this popped in real quick. All right, first little hiccup, the top so the condenser is not the same as the old one so do you try and make up for that i cut half of this out it was like this on both sides i went ahead and cut this part out razor blade wouldn't touch it had to use a little pair of snips but that's the modification there to try and get the condenser in another thing to note just with this condenser uh the bends on these lines were marginal at best what i did on both of them because they were pointing off in this direction is I ever so gingerly got an adjustable wrench on here whatever something like that and then I took another one on the end of it and just gently twisted on this in order to kick the line over this way the rubber line this line here that has the rubber really wasn't as big of a deal it was that hard line down there that was really out of whack and needed to be bent in. All right, so it held a pretty good vacuum overnight. I took the gauges off of it, just that way, in case something with the gauges was leaking, it wouldn't skew the test. But it looked like it held pretty good overnight. And so what I got now is I'm gonna leave the high pressure valve closed, because my understanding is if you leave the high pressure valve open, and hook a can, you know, hook a can of refrigerant to this line, then the can then explodes in your hand. So I'd like to not do that. So I got this valve closed and I'm gonna leave it closed. This valve's currently closed because it's holding a vacuum and I will open it once I have a can of refrigerant on here. Then I got gloves for safety and safety glasses for safety. So I learned a thing. All the tools I have have this little piercing deal that you screw in and then screw back out and it pierces the top of the can like this so apparently since the last time i messed with any ac stuff pretty much everybody has switched to 
it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a, a little valve inside the top of the can that seals this, which is nice because ideally if you don't use the whole thing, then I guess it seals itself back up, or I even was looking at something like you can recharge these or something. Anyways, I used this, and it, on the first can, it must have been able to push the valve open without sealing it in the, at the same time. Because I got this can to take, but I couldn't get it another one. I couldn't get the second can to take. So I had to go get this little adapter. You can see, instead of the end being a point, it's it's pretty blunt so that it can push the valve open without, I guess, messing it up. And this will be able to screw onto that, the yellow line for the gauge manifold. So we'll try that. And then I found out that the low pressure cutoff switch was bad because I got 50 P with the first can, I got 50 PSI into the low pressure circuit and I could not get the clutch to come on. So I, Unplugged it, made a little spade connector jumper wire, and jumped the, uh, whatever, the two connectors in the wiring harness. The AC clutch came on perfect. Everything worked fine there. So the switch was bad, and sometimes it pays to shop around a little bit. I went to O'Reilly's because it was the most convenient for where I was at, and they had this part for $91. Went to Advanced Auto, they had it for $21. So, same part, $70 difference. So I got the blower motor on high, and so as I open that can, it should start cycling the compressor on and off until there's enough Freon in the system to keep it running. Now it actually works at idle. You can sit there at lights and it still works good. Going down the highway, uh, you can, can pretty reliably get down to around 40 degrees. It'll get about 40, 41 degrees coming out of the vents on a, you know, fairly warm 90 degree day. It's not real humid here, so I don't have to worry about that part of it much because more humidity is also going to put more load on the AC system because it has to condense all that water out. So that was a big deal. Uh, this system doesn't have an expansion valve. It has an orifice tube down in here under this fitting. I went ahead and threw a new one of those in just because it also has a filter element built into it. And best I remember, the R12 and 134A orifice tubes had the same part number, so I just left it as that. If you were going to be really pro, you would also change the evaporator for the same reason that you would change the condenser. But I didn't, I couldn't find one readily available, and just decided to leave it. The AC works works pretty good as it is now with the old condenser, so I really don't have any plans on changing it, but. Anyways, that was last summer. The AC is still working good. I actually just did a six hour drive in this thing the other day. Had the AC running the whole time. And I mean, it was it was pretty nice, about 90 to 95 out, a little bit of humidity. And I had to turn it down at some point because it actually got too cold, which was weird. So anyways, that's pretty much the gist of converting specifically one of these systems to R134A. It's fine to, in my case, it was fine to leave the evaporator. It was also fine to leave the condenser. I just went, or the compressor, I just went ahead and resealed it. You need to change the condenser, otherwise it's just never gonna be efficient enough. Go ahead and throw a new one of these guys on because it's cheap. Make sure you put the correct oil and the correct amount of oil in it. And by changing this guy and the condenser up front, I think you'll probably get most of the R12 oil out of there and then you won't have to worry about any efficiency loss from that. Yeah, oh, and I went ahead and just threw new lines on it because there was absolutely no reason not to when I had it apart the second time. So, it wasn't a hard deal, just took a little bit of time. 